building my TSI fuel system, I made a couple of decisions to make significant changes from what Sling uh, calls for in the manual. And the big one is the incorporation of this fuel manifold assembly that I purchased from Midwest Sky Sports. Uh, this was designed by Henry, the owner of Midwest Sky Sports. He's a build assist center in Michigan. And I don't know, he's built lots and lots and lots of slings. And he came up with this design to greatly reduce all of the fittings and the length of the hoses and everything. So I incorporated, I purchased this from him and incorporated it into my fuel system. Um, this is the gascalator provided by Sling. Um, I had holes that were pre-made for this over here, just a little bit over, but it actually rubbed this this ring, the tightening ring, on the the engine mount. Um, so I moved it over just a little bit so I'd have some space here between uh, the gas escalator and the engine mount. Um, and then this is the, the input that comes from the fuel selector. So I haven't done all the hoses yet. Um, obviously I don't have the engine mounted, as you can see. Um, so the, uh, the return lines and the, the feeder line I haven't done yet. Uh, because I was going to wait to get measurements and custom make those lines. Um, and regarding the lines, I decided to upgrade, in my mind, it's an upgrade, uh, and do braided, uh, Teflon-coated uh, fuel lines. So uh, I'll show those on my workbench, and you can kind of see, obviously here I've put the, uh, uh, you know, the heat shielding on it. Um, but I'll show you a couple videos I did, uh, little short pieces on how I terminated these and the stainless steel zip ties, uh, and I'll kind of piece that together. So the fuel hose that I'm using is, uh, is called Goodridge G-Line 910 fuel hose, and it's a aramid-covered, uh, PTFE or Teflon um, lined fuel hose. And this one I purchased from a company called Pegasus Auto Racing Supply. Uh, I just found them online. They sold this particular product. Um, so I went with them. Um, this, like I said, this is an NHRA certified fuel line for drag racing and race cars. Um, I went with the Aramid coated they sell other nylon sheathings and different brands. And then they also have the stainless braid and then they have black stainless braid. Doing a, a lot of online research, it seemed like the stainless braid uh, could be pretty chafing um, to uh, anything that was resting up against it over time. Uh, whereas the nylon coated, I, I thought would be better for that, but also it's, it's lighter weight. Uh, than the stainless steel. And I, and I really didn't feel like I needed stainless steel level kind of quality. This is not running down the bottom of a car or somewhere where it's going to get road debris or anything. So so this is what I went with. And Aramid is like Kevlar. Uh, I think it's like a generic Kevlar or it's a competing version of Kevlar. So it's a, it's a synthetic that's very tough. So the... Um, the the reason I picked this particular one is that the the inner diameter of this particular this is size six fuel line is 0.38 inches. Um, most of the other fuel lines I saw were 0.32. Not a huge difference, uh, but it was closer to the fuel line diameter provided by Sling and recommended by Rotax. So I felt. Like this was just a, a smidge better. It was just a little bigger. It might keep me more in line with what the factory recommended. So I went with this. And I, and I think it's going to work out fine because I know people are flying with the 0.32 inner diameter fuel line and have done just fine. So um, with this fuel hose, you have to buy the matching fittings because it's got a bigger diameter um, the fittings have a bigger diameter. So you have to buy the matching fittings to this fuel line. Um, 
and all this stuff is pretty expensive. So definitely, um, before you tackle it, price out all these little fittings that you're going to need for your project and make sure you're good with spending a pretty good amount of money. Uh, the hose is very expensive per foot. And then each of these fittings is, they're all priced different depending on a straight fitting versus a bent fitting and then how many you buy. Um, I got a little bit of discount on the straight fittings because I needed quite a few of them. And then, and then the price goes up based on the complexity of the fitting, I guess. So to assemble them, uh, what you do is you, you put tape on where you want to cut it. And I'm using, back to Harbor Freight Tools, um, this is a fine-toothed hacksaw blade. And what I was doing is I also bought this online. And this is a, uh, it, it's just something to hold your hose. You put it in your clamp, I mean in your vise. And it has little magnets to hold them in your vise. And it just protects the, uh, the hose. So you put the hose in here. Sorry about that. You put the hose in your vise like this and it holds your, your hose. And then, actually it'd be a better... You would hold it, this would be in your vise, and then you would cut, you'd draw a line and you would cut it in the middle of your tape uh, because you want the tape to keep it from becoming um, unraveling. Then you take the tape off and almost immediately put this on because this stuff will start to um, unravel quickly. Um, I have used my little side clippers. I have a couple of these. Um, Use your old ones that you don't want to use anymore um, because I think this, uh, this Aramid is, is just dulled my blade. Um, so get an old pair of scissors or something to, uh, to trim the, uh, the, the, the fabric away from the, where, where you cut it. So for this particular one, you put, the, uh, you put this fitting on and it just, you just kind of twist it on until the hose is to the end. Then you take this and you put a few drops of oil on this and then you stick it in and then you just, you just twist and twist and twist until it's all the way in. Um, the oil is, is definitely important. Um, I did one fitting without any oil before I realized I had missed that step and it gets really hard to get those last few uh, twists in. And read the instructions on, if you buy this particular hose, again, if you're buying other hose, they have different fittings that work completely different. Uh, so this is particular to the Goodridge fuel hose and their associated fittings. Um, but if you get this one, it's, it's really pretty simple. You don't need any complicated tools. Um, this literally just screws in. And once you get it all the way in, you're supposed to go, I think it's one and a half or two more turns to help pull the hose up tight. Um, so make sure you do that. That's in the instructions. So make sure you read the instructions with the hose. It's on their website. Um, but that's all you do. Um, you, just, you just screw it in. Um, there's no clamping or anything. You don't need any fancy tools. Um, this, the... This clamp for your vise is not even required. I thought it was helpful for cutting and holding it still. Um, I, I use just a regular old wrench on here to help uh, hold, hold this and then to twist this uh, just to give me a little more leverage to, um, to get it screwed in. Um, it, it doesn't just screw in easy. Um, the manual says that once it's complete, if you follow the instructions, it'll withstand a thousand PSI and it's reusable. So if you, if you made a cable, I mean a hose and you got the wrong size and you needed to make it shorter or make another cable, excuse me, a hose, um, you can unscrew this and use it again. It's reusable. So uh, that's also something I, I'm not familiar with the other kind of, I've looked at some videos and stuff, but uh, this is a little different than some of the other braided lines. So just make sure you understand this is particular to this. Um, but I, I showed you on my intro, I had already made um, a few of the hoses uh, just to kind of teach myself how to do it. 
I put the, uh, the fire sleeving on and I did a little clip on how to seal that up and how to do the, uh, the stainless steel zip ties is what, what I use to secure the, uh, the fire sleeving. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to put all that in together and, uh, this is a little quick overview. Um, one other thing that I did, um, I, I will, let me go get a different part and show you. Uh, now, another one of the things I've mentioned a few times is the, uh, your, your project scope and what happens when you make changes to the basic sling design and how much time it can add and expense to your project. So by, by switching to this, this hose, um, I think I've increased quality, longevity, um, probably reduces my five-year replacement cycle, keeps fuel smell out of the cockpit, any number of, of improvements. I think this is just better hose. If you want to use this hose throughout your build, um, this is the fuel selector from Sling. It's an Andair um, fuel selector. Well, these are set up for the hose provided by Sling. The parts that they give you are from Sling. So I wanted to use the same fittings, the same hose throughout my project. So what I did was I ordered from Andair um, the, uh, the 6AN fittings that replace these fittings um, so that my fuel hoses can go right onto here right into the uh, right into the fuel selector. So I'll pull these off. They just pop off. And then you, uh, you put these on. And then I'm actually going to use um, these 45s to kind of just go have all the fuel lines go down. And uh, I thought that would work better. Um, there's a couple other builders who have done this. Um, so I'm kind of following what other people have done. I haven't done this part yet, so we'll see how my success is a little later. Um, but just remember, if you, if you switch up to this fuel line, you've got to make some other decisions on how you're going to do the fittings throughout the rest of the plane. And this is one of those areas. I do not remember how expensive these were. Um, I can't tell your price, but you can look it up. It's on the Andair website. I ordered them directly from Andair. Um, it actually shipped pretty fast, so it wasn't too big of a deal. Um, I also read people had had some problems with getting shipping in a reasonable amount of time. I think it took 10 days to get these. Um, I didn't think for such a specialty part, I didn't think that was too excessive. Uh, but anyway, that's it for today. I'll put a couple more little clips on the end and happy building. Okay, so... I have prepped my um, this fuel hose with um, silicon high temperature silicon fusion tape. Um, comes in a roll like this. You uh, you you peel off. You cut a section, and then you peel off the plastic. And the uh, this tape only sticks to itself. So that's the whole, the whole deal. Um, so anyway, I stretch it pretty tight to get a nice um, seal around here. And that just keeps anything from fraying or getting down into the, the white insulation part of the, uh, the heat shield. And then I'm gonna put a stainless steel zip tie to hold everything together. So I got this little tool on Amazon. It was less than $20 and it makes a big difference with these. I tried to do it without and it's just not easy. So you tighten them up by hand and get it in position of where you want it. And then there's a you can kind of see the slot there. So you feed that in and it grips in there. When you lift it, it sort of grips. And so this will tighten it. 
and you got to watch it because this thing will actually get tight, more tight than you really, you can see how it's kind of bulging out there. So I'm going to just about that point, but then I want to cut it off. So I'm keeping it under tension and then I'm doing this lever and it cuts it off. And when you keep it under tension, when you do this, it's flush here. If you let it off and then cut it, it'll leave a little gap sticking out a little piece and then that's sharp. So this is the way to do it. So you leave it under tension and then you, you just cycle that down and you can kind of see it rotates the cutter and uh, it cuts it off clean. There's no, there's nothing sharp here. Uh, the first one I did, it left just a little bit sticking out and I sort of got some pliers and stuck it down just so I wouldn't cut myself or it wouldn't chafe on anything. But now that I figured it out, the big thing, leave it under tension and then cut it and it cuts it cleanly right inside the, uh, the little zip tie. And then if for any reason you want to um, uh, take this off, um, my cutter came with a little tool that you can stick up underneath this little notch. I don't know if you can see that. Um, there's a little notch under there and you can stick it up underneath the tab that holds it tight and lift it and then you can back it off. I haven't tried it, but I imagine it's not easy, but if you needed to get this off and redo it for some reason, uh, there is a way to do it um, by getting, getting a little tool up underneath the, uh, the tab that holds it tight. So anyway, um, I'll put a link to this on, uh, this video. Uh, like I said, it was like less than 20 bucks and it came with a little tool, the removal tool, if you should ever need it. But, uh, I'll put a link to the fusion tape too. This is high temperature fusion tape. Uh, I don't know the specs on it, but it was higher than the other. So I got it. Um, and I think it just looks clean. Another way to do this is to, is to buy, um, shrink wrap. Uh, like shrink tubing, and you would you would put it on ahead of time and then get your fitting on, and then you would slide it up, and then you would heat it with a torch, and it would melt down. So um, I uh, didn't have any that was big enough, um, and I, I had already bought this, so I just, I'm using this. So I've seen this done. I've seen the shrink, the shrink wrap, uh, the shrink tubing done. Uh, so I think either one just sort of helps protect it and keep it from fraying right here where you cut it and just makes it look nice. So anyway, that's uh, one of my fuel line fittings from the, uh, I think it, this goes from my return line um, out of the fuel manifold and into my uh, firewall.